Welcome to Red Power. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have good news for you today. The same good news that was brought by Jesus Christ to the world 2,000 years ago. He came proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God had now come to earth. And by the presence of the kingdom of God, he was saying that now choices would have to be made. Things could not continue the way it was because the introduction of an alternate kingdom lifestyle would force change in the world. And I'm repeating, bring us to a point of decision making because things would not have to continue in the same way that it had. So this is what he said. Because the kingdom has come, he said, repent which really means to change your mind, to change the way of thinking so that you can change the way you act, that you will see different results in life. So he said, change the way you think, because now the kingdom is here. You cannot think the same way about life, the same way about God as you used to think. You now must think differently and if you think differently then a new world will be created for you you can now be reconnected in fellowship and communion with god you can now overcome where heretofore you had failed where men had known defeat they could now know victory why the kingdom of god is here the kingdom which is a kingdom of love a kingdom of power a kingdom of joy, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom that would enable us that when we enter into it, our sins could be forgiven, we could be at peace with God, and the blessing and prosperity of God would become ours. That kingdom is still here today, and it ha had, has it changed the world then and opened up a new world to humanity, we need to be aware that that difference is still with us. Maybe you're not as aware, but seek to find out truth. For Jesus again said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It begins with a personal relationship with God because in that good news he was saying that man could now find forgiveness for sins. We could be at peace with God. And we have persons on the phone waiting to pray with you to help you how to make peace with God that you can have peace within yourself. How you can live successful in this present world. How there is a standard that you can live by that will make a difference to you, bring joy to your life, and that you will then be a blessing to your family. So call the number on the screen right now and let us help you to connect to this alternate kingdom, the kingdom of the living God. This is the real stuff. We'll continue talking about that, but let's go to a song of praise. The kingdom of God is here. Everything can change for you.
you for staying with us. The, we've been talking about the reality that the kingdom of God is here, an alternate way of doing things for personal life, but it's equally true for nations. The kingdom of God is here, so it is saying we do not have to remain the same or we ought not to continue to operate in the same way that we have over the years because now there is a new kingdom. There is a kingdom that says there is a better way to do things, that there is a way that nations can become great. There is a way that nations can succeed. But because of the presence of this kingdom, then here is how Jesus introduced it concerning himself. He says, look, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And I read from Luke 4, 18 what he says because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he's saying to the poor that you can now find another way that blessing success fruitfulness and productivity can become a reality so he has come to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for those who are in prison in, for the prisoners those who are trapped in the various areas of life and the circumstances of our world the recovery of sight to the blind to set the oppressed free and to proclaim a time of God's favor towards his people. That kingdom is here and this is the time for the kingdom and that is what gives us hope for real change in our nation because you see there is a better way to do business there is a better way to govern nations there is a better way that we can relate to one another in the world today and that is what God in Christ is calling us to to say that I have my kingdom and my kingdom has come so therefore look to my kingdom but it puts us in a position that we have to make some choices we have to decide whether we're going to believe the reality of the provision of the alternate kingdom or we will continue in the kingdom of the world which is the way of evil the way of corruption that which is creating all that we have today or are we prepared to make a change make some choices and see things different we can because the kingdom is here and because of that kingdom the standards it has brought some new standards that we can operate by and it is these set of standards that guarantees the success in nations because it is righteousness that exalts nations but sin evil wickedness it brings a reproach and destruction upon any nation and so now we do not have to accept the status quo for the kingdom is here and God says in the word hence that if you want his kingdom to rule which will bring success and prosperity to personal life to family and to nation then he says that the leaders must be leaders that are committed to a new set of values a new set of standards a new set of principles to operate by and so he says when you're choosing leaders select leaders choose men and I quote from your verse from the scripture of cruise men who fear God men and women who you can trust and men and women who ha who hate corruption that let me summarize is simply saying look for leaders who live by some standards those who you can trust but men and women who you can trust can only be trusted if they are faithful to a set of standards. And so, what are those standards? Because they will be only as good as the standards to which they are committed and remain faithful. And so, as in our world today, we have leaders who have no clear standards, no clear values, even though we hear many saying that, oh, we need value-based thinking. But what are those values? Can those values be trusted and are they committed to them? Then let us hear from your leaders. Ask the question, to what is, are you committed? What are the values that you believe in so that we can trust you to be true to those values? That's the only condition that we can guarantee real change. So if we want change, 
then we have got to change the kingdom that we live from and the philosophy, the standards that govern. And what we need now is to return to the faith of our fathers that imbibed the standards of this kingdom. That is what has laid the base for our nation. But in our modern time, our leaders have drifted away from it. And therefore, it makes it difficult to trust them because they have no set standard of belief. They have gone to a belief of a system of the world where anything goes. Anybody does anything that they feel. It depends on how you feel it. When there is that kind of variable, you cannot trust leadership. Leadership that can be trusted must be leadership that is committed to a clear set of values and principles to a standard that is known so that you can ex know what to expect from our leaders. These are things we must think about if we want real change in our nation. And as in the air there is the old talk of elections, then if we want a different society, the crime, the violence, the economic problems, the poverty, injustice reigns, then you've got to choose leaders who fear God, leaders who can be trusted, leaders who hate corruption. Who are such leaders? Leaders that are committed to a standard. What's the best standard? The standard of the kingdom of the living God has shown us in the word of God the time-tested proven principles that work because this kingdom is a kingdom rooted on one fundamental principle and that is love your neighbor as you love yourself which is an outflow from love of God and if we live love and if we are committed to that standard, then you know what to expect from those who lead. They will lead in the best interest of the people because it is not self-interest that drives it. It is not party interest that drives it. It is the best welfare of the people. Why? Because the love of God, the fear of God is in their hearts and minds and they are committed to the standards of God. If not, then suffering hardships, difficulty, pain, and we will continue with the same old, same old, same old. If we want real change, then the principles of the alternate kingdom must be considered. Hence, Jesus says, change the way you think because a different kingdom is now here. So there is hope for that the oppressed can be set free. There is hope, good news for the poor real change and it is since the coming of that kingdom two thousand over two thousand years ago that change serious change began in the world the barbaric societies of the then world was influenced by this kingdom because love drove it and change comes when love comes let's look to that kingdom it is the only way to exalt our nation to greatness Again, stay with us as we invite you to continue the message we started last week that because there is this kingdom, then what we believe is important and we must now make some decisions of what we believe, in whom we will believe if we want change in personal life that will result in change in family and in nation. Stay with us. to him must believe that he is and if you believe that he is then it is a belief that is the same as what he gave a belief that is faith and what is faith absolute trust and confidence in God if it is in something else it is not faith Call it what it's a concept of belief. It is only faith to God when it is directed to Him. Come on, am I talking with you? I know some of you are saying, but this is elementary. But we better get the elementary solid inside of us. If not, we're going to miss it. 
Because it is a call in this hour that the just have to live by faith. And so we therefore must clarify what that faith is, who is the just, and how does the just live by faith? And so I want to continue to reinforce God's concept of faith so that we do not raise another generation in a loose, flaky faith that cannot transform and work righteousness. Faith that we must live by the just, the righteous, those who have been made right with God upon repentance of their sins, having been washed in the blood, cleansed by the blood, sanctified by the blood, and therefore set apart by the Holy Spirit. Period. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Get this basic reestablished in your mind because the battle lines in the planet are drawn. I'm about to tell you something. I hear God saying, I don't even know what that means. That makes me quake. But I'm going to throw it out there anyway in a minute. As we were worshiping, I heard it. But walk with me, just these few minutes of just solidifying this truth. It is faith, the just, because you and I couldn't justify ourselves before God. We're justified only by faith. That is that absolute trust and confidence in who God is, what he has said, what he has done. Oh, glory to God. Come on, are you still there with me? That's what it is. And if you therefore believe that implicitly and put your trust in that God, that's the kind of faith that brings salvation. And therefore now, if you have that kind of faith, walk with me, saints. If you have that kind of faith, you say that that defines you because you are the just. Being justified by that kind of faith in God have accepted the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ and you are grateful for Calvary and the blood and the work of the blood and what it has done and this morning you can stand before the living God with a clear conscience because you know that I have been washed in the blood. I have been made clean. I am a child of the living God. Lord, if you are not confident of that this morning, don't leave this altar here today until it's settled in your heart that you feel a confidence that I have been washed, I have been cleansed, I have been sanctified, and there is nothing between my soul and my Savior. You must be able to declare this morning, it is is well with my soul and with my soul it is well you need to leave this place this morning with a confidence that if I die today there is no doubt in my mind heaven is my home I'm heading to glory because I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able he is God he is Lord he is Savior he is deliverer he is keeper he is king he rules he reigns and I am his and 
and he is mine and in him I live in him I move in him I have my being if you don't have that confidence don't leave this place today because you're dead and you're not waiting to die to be dead you are already dead in your trespasses and in your sins and unless a man is born again he cannot enter the kingdom of the living God do not leave here with doubt do not leave here wondering get to that altar fall on your knees bow there and stay there until a conviction a confidence come in your soul that it is well i don't know if you know what it feels like to feel clean before god to know that nothing is blocking me on good it is well you have to have that confidence so any doubt in your mind anything that wonder if the devil can bring up something and it make you question it go there until you came to your chest that you know no matter what he raises i can hear the peace of god in my heart saying i covered it i covered it i dealt with it hallelujah every accusation that he can bring you can hear the advocate saying i covered it i covered it i covered it that is why the songwriter could say when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrow like sea billows roll i do what whatever the law sing it when sorrow away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood and so you need to apply to the blood you need to cry out let your blood let your blood let your blood wash me I repent of my sin I turn away from my sin Lord my eyes are upon you oh God Find the altar this morning for the battle lines are drawn. So, faith. 
absolute trust and confidence in God who he says he is what he says and what he has done and therefore you can be justified only by that kind of faith in him because of repentance through the blood of Jesus by the cross that nailed him there and then that just now must live by faith that just must live by faith and so let me clarify what that is that we make sure that what we're living by that just must live by faith because without faith it is impossible to please God let me just quickly say you want to live by faith like I'm saying it's not just knowing that you know God kind of out there somewhere and I believe in him and I call upon him because somewhere in me I can't even explain where but I know there is a God and I have even loosely asked him repented and so on and he's out there but there must be evidence to support that faith is present because faith without works is dead come on are you there faith without works is what again when we're working this thing out we go to works to mean we take when we have a particular problem that we or need and we take it to God and asking him to meet that particular need then we say faith without work we try to see if there is just you know a little something that I can do like for instance we often preach and we say if you are praying that God will supply food then if you have faith you go and put on the pot praise God for that that's good that's an expression of faith with the other works that you do but I want to tell you the more profound works of which something like that becomes an expression but we are doing more of the little things than the essence of what the works is come experience a taste of the kingdom Come experience a taste of the supernatural healing, healing signs, wonders. wonders at Fellowship Tabernacle on Sunday, November 8th to Wednesday, November 11th in Kingston and Friday, November 13th to Sunday, November 15th in Mandeville. Come experience pulsating music, prophetic preaching, powerful, powerful ministry, ministry with our host pastors, Reverend Alan Melody Miller and our guest speakers, Dr. Sita and Lucy Real, and our youth evangelist, Kevin Allen. It's, it's all, all about, about connecting with, with Jesus. Jesus. 7 p.m. nightly. See you there. Thank you so much for being with us today and we invite you to join us again next week at the same time. Make some decisions. What do you believe? You cannot remain on the fence. You must now decide whose side will you be on. If you're on the Lord's side, then enter into the kingdom of the living God and let the principle of the power of love be what governs your life and it is the way that then we can be a blessing to others and we will commit ourselves to service. Let's work to make this nation great by obeying the principles of the kingdom of the living God. Join us again next week, same time. It is our pleasure to have been with you and we would love to have you again with us next week. God bless you. Peace be with you. Go forth this week. Let's love one another, man. Let's live love and let's consider the alternative. The kingdom of God has come. God bless you. Come on, people of God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. He is the God of Jacob.